bit here um, for our attendees and for our petitioners who are in the audience. Welcome to the 1,159th regular meeting and public hearing of the Livonia City Planning Commission. I wish to inform all interested persons in our audience tonight that on petitions on tonight's agenda, which involve a question of zoning, the Planning Commission will make a recommendation to the City Council and the City Council after holding their own public hearing will make the final determination as to whether a petition is approved or denied. The Planning Commission will hold the only public hearing on requests for preliminary plats and or vacating petitions. Commission's recommendation is forwarded to the City Council for the final determination as to whether the petition is accepted or rejected. For petitions requesting a waiver of use or a site plan, if it's denied tonight, the petitioner will have 10 days in which to appeal the decision in writing to City Council. All resolutions adopted by the City Planning Commission will become effective seven days after the date of adoption. The Planning Commission and professional staff have reviewed each of these petitions upon their filing. Staff has furnished the Commission with both approving and denying resolutions, which the Commission may or may not use depending on the outcomes of the proceedings tonight. If the Secretary is ready, please call the roll. Smiley. Present. Mrs. McHugh. Here. Mr. Long. Present. Mr. Ventura. Pete. Here. Oh, you. oh, I'm sorry, President. Uh, Karen Magnus, President, Chairman Wilshaw. Is here, and uh, Mr. Bongiro is absent tonight. Gotcha. Uh, also with us tonight, we have Mark Toramina, Stephanie Reese, Deb Walter, Scott Miller, uh, all from our planning department, and uh, also our Livonia Television uh, staff is here with us as well, making sure our broadcast is making it on the air. Uh, again, I just want to remind folks in our audience that uh, with each of these petitions, we will first go to our planning staff for background information. We'll have an opportunity for the commissioners to ask any questions of the planning staff that they have. Uh, we'll then ask that the petitioners please use the raise hand uh, feature to indicate uh, yourself, and we will ask the petitioner to uh, introduce themselves and give any additional information that they would like. Uh, we'll also have an opportunity for anyone else in the audience attending uh, who would like to make any comments for or against petitions uh, to comment uh, during those petitions. So we'll uh, definitely have an opportunity for everyone in our audience to participate. Uh, and we'll sort of prompt you along as we go with uh, when those steps are. Uh, so uh, with that, if our secretary is ready, let's move into the Beginning of our agenda, public hearings, item number one. Petition 2020-07-01-04, submitted by Adams Park Development, LLC, pursuant to section 23.01 of the City of Livonia Zoning Ordinance, number 543, as amended, requesting to rezone the properties at 14416 Harrison Avenue and 28201 Linden Avenue, which is the former Adams Elementary School site located on the south side of Linden between Inkster and Middlebelt Roads in the southeast corner of section 24 from public land to R1, one family residential. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Mr. Toramina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, this is a rezoning petition involving uh, the former Adams Elementary School site. Uh, the rezoning would uh, change uh, the classification from PL public land to R1, one family residential. Uh, this is a 12 and three quarter acre site that is located on the south side of Linden Street between Inkster and Middle Belt Roads. Um, immediately to uh, the, well, really to the, to the east and to the west of the property, as you can see from the, the zoning map, there is R1 uh, zoning. Uh, these are developed residential subdivisions, including Buckingham Village, Compton Village, and Compton Square Estates. Immediately to the south of the subject property is city-owned property, uh, that is uh, Dooley Park. And then to the north, across Linden, uh, are residential homes zoned R2, including the recently completed Bishop Estates cluster development. Uh, 
This is an aerial photograph showing what the site looked like when the school was located on the property. The school has since been uh, raised and the site is, is being cleared. Uh, this is a concept plan that was submitted with the rezoning application. It shows a total of 39 lots. Uh, the R1 zoning would allow for the development of single family homes on conventional lots that would have a minimum lot width of 60 feet and width by a minimum lot depth of 120 feet and for a total area no less than 7,200 square feet. Uh, this design, as you can see, shows a U-shaped road pattern uh, with both streets having access from Linden. Most of the lots would front on the new internal road system that includes a cul-de-sac in the southwest corner of the subdivision. Lots 11 through 39 would have access to the new roads and lots one through 10, as you can see, would front directly on Harrison Avenue. Uh, the plan includes a stormwater detention basin, which is in the southeast corner of the site, as well as an open space area that is located along the south side of the property adjacent to Dooley Park. And uh, Mr. Chair, if, uh, if I may, I'll read out the correspondence on this item. Yeah, yes, please. Uh, first is a letter from our engineering division dated August 10th that reads, in accordance with your request, the engineering division has reviewed the above reference petition. We have no objections to the proposed rezoning at this time. The parcels are assigned the addresses of 28201 Linden Avenue and 14416 Harrison Avenue. The legal description submitted by the owner of the, on the proposed plan appears to be correct and should be used to describe the proposed rezoned property. The proposed development is currently serviced by public water main, sanitary and storm sewers, which will need to be extended to service any new residences. The submitted drawing does not indicate any utility connections, so we do not have any knowledge of impacts to the existing systems at this time. The owner has been in contact with this office regarding the project and is aware of the engineering department requirements. It should be noted that should the project move forward, the proposed construction will be required to meet the Wayne County stormwater ordinance, including detention requirements. A full review of the proposed development will be completed when plans are submitted for permitting. That letter is signed by David Lear, Assistant City Engineer. Next letter uh, is dated August 10th, and it comes from our Department of Finance, indicating that they have no objections to the proposal as there are no outstanding amounts receivable, general, water or sewer. That letter signed by Connie Kumpula, Chief Accountant. We have a similar letter of no objection from the Office of the Treasurer dated August 7th, indicating that at this time there are no taxes due, uh, therefore no objections to the proposal. And then lastly, we have an email correspondent from a resident who gives their name as Atul Kishore or Kishore. And it reads as follows. It's dated August 15th. On behalf of the new Bishop Condominiums Homeowners Association, I would like to share our views on the matter of petition 2020-714, the rezoning of the former Adams Elementary School site. For family residential zoning, the city needs to include the following in their plan approval process. One, the electric and utility wires along the north side of Linden Street should be transitioned from above ground to below ground for safety and reliability. As additional loads will feed off these lines, it is critical that these wires east of Harrison are buried for safety and curb appeal. Two, Linden Road east of Harrison needs to be completely reconstructed to handle the additional traffic load. There is already too much traffic traveling at a higher than posted speeds. Three, Linden Street in front of Bishop Condominiums has a low elevation resulting in constant flooding. Todd Zelinsic, City of Livonia Engineering Department is aware of this issue and looking at short-term and long-term alternatives. Drainage is required for safety and proper maintenance and a solution needs to be addressed as soon as possible. And four, Linden Street is already a high traffic road and the entrance for the new residential home should be along Harrison to avoid increased risk of accidents in the area. I would like to be kept informed of any developments in this project as it impacts our homes and their surroundings. Again, uh, the person uh, giving their name here is uh, Atul Kishore and uh, that is the extent of the correspondence, thank you. Great, right, thank you, Mark. Uh, <coughs> is there any questions of the planning staff for, or any questions of the planning commission for the planning staff at this point? If not, uh, our petitioners are in the audience. If you could please uh, click raise hand, I can, 
I recognize you and we can speak with you. I believe we have uh, Stuart Michelson and uh, there we go. And uh, Mr. Michelson, uh, good evening. Good evening. If you would like to start with your name and address, uh, you can start uh, with that and then tell us more about your project. Okay, the, um, my name is Stuart Michelson. Um, I'm one of the partners at Windmill Homes. We um, uh, were at 31333 West 13 Mile Road, Farmington Hills. And um, we have, um, as you can see, come up with a, slight, a site plan that we feel uh, works within the R1 zoning. Um, we've done some very preliminary engineering at this point, just uh, to get the rezoning. Um, and we have the 39 lots. We're looking forward to um, building uh, 39 homes in the community. Uh, we have um, purchased in other communities, school sites infill similar to this um, and been very successful. Um, we did uh, one in the city of Farmington. We've done a couple in Farmington Hills. We did one in uh, West Bloomfield. Um, we find that these uh, infill sites are, are very um, um, good for the communities. Uh, many times we find that people are living in the older homes surrounding us and, and don't wanna leave the neighborhood are very happy to live in that area, but want a new house. And uh, so this is something that we provide them. Great. And if you uh, have Mr. any Michael questions, i uh, be glad to try to answer them for you. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Michelson. Uh, do you have uh, some other folks with you this evening that are on our call that we can uh, also introduce? There are other people, I'm not sure. They raise uh, their do hand. you know what names I should be looking for? Stuart Scher, Roger Scher, and George Major. Okay. All right, great. All right, this is Stuart Scher. Can you hear me? We do hear you. Good evening. Oh, great. Good. Thank you. Good evening to you as well. And uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to make this presentation. Uh, this is a public hearing for rezoning, and, and that's the way uh, we've, we've approached this. Um, this is not a site plan hearing. Uh, the current zoning is PL, and we're looking to rezone to R1, uh, which is consistent with the master plan. Uh, and as you can also see uh, from the, the current uh, uh, photo, aerial photo, uh, most of the acreage surrounding our site uh, is already zoned R1. So we're, we harmonize and we're consistent with much of the neighboring property. Um, we, we're a 12.71 uh, acre site, as Mark Termina had uh, earlier described. Um, and this is a, a, also a, a, a former school site. The, the Adams School building has been raised, so the land now is completely vacant. Uh, by the way, uh, the development company that we formed is called Adams Park Development. Um, Stuart Michelson and, and uh, George Major, his partner, uh, are partners with ourselves, Stuart and Roger Scher. Um, in this, this joint venture. Uh, both companies have a long track record of excellent experience of development within the greater metropolitan Detroit area. Um, and uh, in fact, I think we described that a little bit uh, a week ago during this, this study session. Um, and, and the product for uh, this rezoned property um, is something that we have successfully constructed in, in many of the communities surrounding Detroit, mostly on the western side of metropolitan Detroit. Um, 
as I mentioned earlier, it's consistent with the master plan, consistent with the surrounding properties. And um, we're happy to, to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Uh, and I don't know if anyone else from our group is, is interested in saying a few words, uh, but uh, um, we, uh, we focused on the rezoning aspect of, of tonight's meeting. So um, we're, we're not fully prepared to, to get into the technical engineering issues, but we certainly have listened to and understood all of the comments that you've made in connection with the site plan that we are uh, currently working with as, as shown on the screen. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, let anyone else speak that, that would like to so that I don't monopolize this conversation. And I would like to thank Mark uh, Termina for an excellent pre presentation. Yes, thank you, uh, Stuart. The, uh... And it is a good point uh, to raise, not only for uh, uh, the tone of this discussion, but also for our audience members as well, uh, that this is a rezoning request that we're looking at tonight. Uh, we're simply looking at the request to rezone this from public land to R1 at this point, and is that the appropriate zoning uh, and, and the restrictions that come along with that zoning for this property. Uh, the site plan that we see before us on the screen and any discussion around the site plan is purely conceptual at this point. Uh, that will come back to us at a later date uh, to be discussed in detail and depth. So uh, really, we're, we're really focused on zoning. Uh, there may be some references to the site plan, but, uh, but really it's zoning that we're mostly concerned with tonight. Uh, I believe we also have George with us, uh, your partner. Uh, I did see him raise his hand and he can unmute himself and uh, introduce himself as well. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, this is George Major. I just wanted to say hello. I'd also like to thank Mark for a very good presentation. And there's really nothing else that I can add at this point. Stuart and Stuart did a great job. <laughs> I think spoke well uh, on our behalf. Okay, great. Thank you. So we have uh, uh, all three with us here tonight. We appreciate that. And uh, I will um, ask you gentlemen to just stand by for one second and I'll go to the commission first and see if there's any questions for our petitioners this evening. Mr. Chair. Mrs. Smiley. Yes, um, I was wondering, you mentioned a couple um, uh, subdivisions that are nearby. Do you have any that um, you are modeling this new Adams Park after that are nearby? Could you give me an address of a subdivision you've built that would be similar to what you're building at Adams Park? One that we uh, just completed a couple, about two years ago, uh, is called uh, Riverwalk of Farmington. It's in um, the city of Farmington. It's uh, an old school site, the Flanders School, elementary school, and it um, is on Flanders, which is um, between eight and nine, <clears throat> and it uh, runs um, Flanders runs east and west, and it's uh, just east of Farmington Road. I don't have an address handy, but there's uh, 33 houses on the property. You can't miss it. Okay, no problem. I'll be able to find it. And that, um, and that backs up to a city park also, so very similar to this. Um, we have another one that we're just completing. We're building... Um, in Farmington Hills, it was the old Wooddale School. It was, um, uh, it's located in the middle of uh, a couple of subdivisions called, um, God, um, all of a sudden I can't think of the name of the subs, but they're between, it's between 12 and 13 mile and between Drake and Farmington Road, right in the middle. And, um, we just um, are finishing up uh, 18 homes in there. We have okay. people living in there. That's, those are the two closest. Um, that's, that's fine. They would look similar. It's going to be, I would assume, um, ranches and colonial type houses. Yes, yes, exactly. And um, they're going to be in about the price, the same price range as what you're expecting to build here? 
Yeah, um, uh, uh, right now, because of price increases, especially in lumber, it'll be a little higher priced, but uh, it'll be very similar. Okay, thank you. And I know we're just talking about zoning, so but this will give me, should this go through, a little, an idea of what your product looks like. Thank you. Great question, Mrs. Smiley. Uh, any other questions for our petitioners from the commission? By the way, Mrs. Smiley, it's uh, the, the subdivision, I couldn't think of the name, is Colony Park in Farmington Hills. Colony Park, okay, great. Yeah, that's uh, the Wooddale School site. Okay, thank you. thank you. Any other questions for our petitioners at this time from the commission? If not, I don't see anyone. Uh, I will go to the audience and we'll give the audience an opportunity to uh, address this issue as well. And then of course we can go back to the petitioner and uh, ask any additional questions and follow up on anything that we hear from the audience. Uh, we do have uh, Atul Kishori who uh, wrote a letter to us and we uh, put that in the record. We're uh, glad to have them with us tonight. We'll give them an opportunity to speak as well. Good evening. Thank you, can you hear me? We do hear you. Okay, thank you for giving me the chance to talk about this uh, development on behalf of Bishop Condominiums. As you mentioned, those are the new condominiums right across from Linden and right across from this new subdivision. Um, I take, uh, personally, I feel it's a good opportunity to use that land. Uh, my only concerns are, as I mentioned on the, um, on the email, the biggest one that probably comes right away is the entrances on Linden. And that with the curvature of Linden, uh, that is bound to have a lot of accidents because people are just flying by on that corner and uh, having two entrances on Linden, which will cause an incremental risk assessment. So I would recommend that the, uh, that the entrances to this new sub come off of Harrison. That's uh, probably for this committee at this time and the zoning, uh, that would be my main request. Other than the three that I mentioned about the electric wires, Linden totally needing redone. Uh, we have uh, water flooding issues already there um, that uh, the resolution is moving very slowly with the engineering and I'm willing to escalate that further because we can't even go by this winter without that being resolved. Thank you, Mr. Kishori. Uh, just for our record, can we get your uh, address so that we can- uh, Yeah, it's 28178 Linden. Okay, great, thank you, sir. And it's Kishore. For sure. Okay. Thank you. No problem. For, thank you for correcting that. Mm -hmm. No problem. Okay. Uh, so we heard from Mr. Kishore. We also have Mrs. Uh, Shockley. Let me uh, for an opportunity to speak. And she can just unmute herself. Okay. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Shockley. Um, I am a resident at 27954 Linden. So I am directly uh, across the street from the proposed site, um, just a little east of the Bishop uh, Estate condos. Okay. Um, my concern, some of them echo uh, my neighbor. We have extraordinarily high traffic uh, on the street already moving at a high rate of speed and the entrance uh, should be placed on Harrison should this move forward. We also have quite a bit of flooding and additional impervious surface cover is not going to help that issue. Looks like from the site map there is a plan to deal with that. Um, my, my main concern though is the pollution that will be caused once it's developed, um, particularly the noise and the air pollution um, from the diesel trucks. Um, as I'm directly across from it um, and I'm currently working from home, and uh, educating a child from home, we're using you know the residents for, for, for everything at this point. And um, my employer has actually informed me that I should prepare to be working remotely for up to three years. So I don't want to have you know diesel truck emissions, you know, just exposing us all day long. And the neighbors that are around the site to be developed are all of a vulnerable population. We have elderly, we have small developing children, um, and I myself am an asthmatic. So I am opposed to the rezoning simply because I do, do not want the site developed um, for the pollution that it will cause. Also during the development of the Bishop Estate condos, 
the entirety of that development, I had trash that blew into my yard every single day that I was having to clean up. There was construction equipment that used my lawn, not just the right of way, but my lawn proper, um, because they didn't recognize that it was private property. And we were constantly having to shoo them off the property and they would make promises and leave business cards to come back and repair the lawn. And we just have massive divots and ruts and it's extremely hard to mow it. Um, so I'm opposed for that reason as well, all of the construction equipment that will be on site. I oppose the development of this land because as it was noted, it is public land. It's our land and people are currently using it. There is a public land designation further up Linden, but that is more developed. And there's certain activities that people can't you know, do at both sites. So currently the land is being used by numerous people every day to do activities such as fly kites, run RC cars, hit golf balls. Um, the land is being currently used by the public as public land. And that concludes my comments. Thank you for my time. Well, thank you, Ms. Shockley. I appreciate your comments. And we'll uh, talk to the petitioner about some of those issues that you raised and see what we can do to, to assist with those as we move forward. Appreciate your comments. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak uh, for or against this item? If so, please click raise hand so we can uh, recognize you. Oh, we have uh, Mr. McCabe. Let me uh, recognize him. Good evening, uh, Mr. McCabe. You can unmute yourself. Hello, can you hear me okay? We hear you great. Fine, thank you. Uh, I live at 14236 Lyons Street. I'm east of the park, uh, Dewey Park. I've been here about 20 years and uh, I'm not in favor of the rezoning. And it's for many reasons. It's strain on infrastructure, which people have talked about already. You know, the strain on the water, the sewer, the electrical, the cable, police, fire, and then you add the traffic that 39 homes would bring. Um, R1, I guess, although I'm not in favor of the rezoning, it's better than the alternatives, which I think would be uh, attached condos or apartments and things of that nature. So R1 is a lesser of evils, in my opinion, but Again, I'd like to have it stay as green space. And I'm not an expert in zoning by any stretch, but there's gotta be a better way than just sh shoving houses everywhere. Um, doesn't, uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The, the neighborhood is 64 years old. It's been fine without those houses up until now. Uh, I'm hoping it can continue. Um, I know the developers have mentioned success in various other uh, endeavors, but success for whom? You know, the developers come in and they build a bunch of houses. You know, there's a there's a windfall of money for the for the city, and they make their money. But here, the residents, we're stuck with you know, whatever there is. So I'm not in favor of it before because of that. And I guess my question is, to what gain? You know. Uh, I don't see a lot of gain for my personal house with this uh, rezoning. So um, I'm hoping it doesn't pass. I'm, I'm opposed to it. And um, I'll be watching the developments. Not the development, <laughs> let me be clear. The, I like to see how this rolls out. All right, thank you, sir. We appreciate your comments and are making notes of uh, your concerns and we'll again uh, try to uh, circle back once we've heard from all the audience members to uh, address any of these concerns that have been raised. So I, I appreciate your comments tonight, uh, this evening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have one other uh, person with their hand raised. I don't have a name for them, but I'm going to uh, recognize them. It, uh, their entry says uh, B103100. Uh, they can unmute themselves and introduce themselves with their name and address, uh, please. Hello, can you hear me? We do hear you. Thank you. Uh, yes, that's my work login. I'm sorry. My name is Belinda Ellison. Okay, my good, address, evening. good evening. And thank you for uh, affording me the time to uh, speak on, on my behalf. Uh, my address is 28154 Linden. I live exactly directly across from the Adams property. 
which um, and right next to what used to be the swim club, the uh, current uh, condominiums right now. Um, thank you again for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, a lot of people have raised some very valid issues. Um, I'm kind of on the fence. Um, I know development is good, but sometimes if we get too much development, that can also bring a lot of issues as well. I'm concerned mainly about the traffic. I'm really surprised with the condominiums that were um, built, which are very nice, by the way. Um, but I'm amazed at just by having six condominiums, how much more traffic has come through um, on our street. And Linden is like a main residential street, so everybody uses it to access, to get to, to Inkster, to Millabelt, especially when there's a, um, a lot of, a lot of uh, construction going on. So um, I am concerned about the entrances getting in and out of the subdivision. Um, uh, someone mentioned about uh, the flooding on Linden that would be in front of the condominiums there. As you recall, that used to be the swim club. And ever since the condominiums have been built, whenever, if it rains heavily, there's usually a lot of flooding because of that. Uh, so I would see that as an engineering issue, I guess. Um, but anyway, um, I'm mostly concerned about the traffic. Uh, when Adams School was still in operation, there used to be a stop sign there for the school and the kids crossing and whatnot. And then they re decided to remove the stop sign. Even when the stop sign was there, the traffic was, I, I was amazed at how fast people were going up and down a main residential street. Once they took the, the stop sign out, it's just, I mean, it's a free for all. I, I, people are due at 40 with like, not even batting an eye. So that is really something I feel should needs to be addressed because we do have little children in the neighborhood and I am concerned for their safety as well. Um, I think that's all I have to say for now. Again, thank you for uh, allowing me the time to speak. I well, appreciate it. Excellent points. And uh, we will uh, be talking about those additionally here tonight. So thank you for uh, raising them. Is thank there you. anyone else in the audience wishing to speak? On this item, we do have another uh, uh, person in the audience, so we'll give them an opportunity to speak. Uh, their name is Lorraine. They can unmute themselves and uh, introduce themselves. Lorraine, we need you to unmute yourself. I don't see Lorraine unmuting herself, uh, so we won't be able to hear her. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak for or against this item? If so, please click raise hand. We have uh, Mr. Priest, who is welcome to unmute himself and uh, address his concerns. Mr. Priest, you can unmute yourself Seems to be having some difficulty in meeting himself. Uh, that's uh, not doing too well here on these uh, unmutes here. Uh, anyone else in the audience wishing to speak for or against this item? I don't have anyone else clicking raise hand. I have a request into both Lorraine and to Mike, Mr. Priest, Mike Priest, to unmute themselves if they wish but they are not unmuting themselves. So um, we will move on. Is there anyone uh, else in the audience wishing to speak for or against this item? If not, uh, is there any comments or questions from the commission uh, for our petitioners based on the uh, items that we've heard from uh, Mr. Priest, I believe it's just the, uh, uh, he started to unmute himself. The mute button, by the way, is uh, either in the lower right corner or lower left corner if you're on a computer or if you're on a, a tablet type device, I believe it's uh, uh, elsewhere Hello. on the screen. Can you hear me now? We do hear you, Mr. Priest. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> I'm the civil engineer on this project and uh, you're muted. <laughs> I, I was uh, when I got out of school, which was quite a while ago, I worked for the city of Livonia for about 
eight years uh, back in the 70s. And as far as the, the infrastructure is concerned and the drainage, there's uh, two huge drains adjacent to this property. One of them is along Linden, and it's like a 21 foot wide by 12 foot high arch. You could drive a truck through that thing. It flows easterly into the Red Run Golf Course. And then along the east property line, there's the Bonia Drain 17, which is a eight foot diameter pipe. So as far as uh, flooding, the only way there would be flooding would be if the, if the grading wasn't properly done because there's plenty of capacity in those pipes, uh, which should allow for no flooding, even though, uh, you know, there is, and also we are going to detain the water so that the runoff is uh, equivalent to what it is today in an undeveloped state. And uh, that will reduce the amount of runoff. There's also adequate sanitary sewer and water mains adjacent to the site too. So I don't think there's any engineering problems uh, with stressing any of the facilities adjacent to the site. Okay, thank you, Mr. Priest. We really appreciate uh, your insight and comments uh, on this item as well. Uh, I don't know if we got your address. Uh, can we get that for our record? My address? Yes, yes, please. Well, I, I live in Livonia and I have for quite a while. I live on Riverside Street, uh, south on the turkey farm. But my office is in Canton. It's over on Copperneck, which is a half mile road between uh, Joy and Warren, just east of Haggerty. Okay. All right. Thank I've you. I've done uh, many subdivisions in Livonia over the years. Okay. All right. Great. Well, thank you. We really appreciate your comments uh, this evening. Hi, this is Lorraine Campo. Are you able to hear me? Hi. Yes, we can hear you. Good evening. Great. Um, hi, we're at 14449 Harrison, directly across from the property that is the proposed rezoning. Um, okay. I definitely oppose this. Um, we've been Livonia residents and here in this home for 35 years. Um, I guess probably the, one of the biggest reasons as to why I oppose this is, first of all, in the main changes that have gone on through the school systems and everything, and um, having Adams there for so many years, which was a wonderful place for our children to go while they were able to go there uh, until the school zones were restructured. Um, mm -hmm. However, I guess one of the biggest problems that I have with this is that I feel that the school board actually failed us um, in selling off this property. Um, I think they were not within their uh, level of, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, level of jurisdiction or whatever, in my opinion, that because this does directly affect our neighborhoods, um, you know, we had that as a school, we counted on that as school, as park space, as green space, as a couple of the other people commented on. And we feel like that is important to maintain in our neighborhood. Um, I'm not looking forward to having any neighbors there. I haven't had any for 35 years and certainly don't want any now. Um, and mainly it is because it's a nice peaceful area and really don't want that all developed. I'm, when you look at the other areas in Livonia that are just house on top of house, and to be honest, some of the new areas that I've looked at are not all that impressive. Um, it's gonna be, um, I'm not sure how that will actually look in affecting our neighborhood. I mean, obviously those homes are gonna look much different than what we currently have now. And what I missed part of the beginning, what are the lot sizes on the proposed development? Uh, Mr. Tormina, what are the, uh, the lot size requirements for R1? 60 feet by 120 feet, very similar to uh, the lot sizes that exist to the east and west within the, the, uh, the subdivisions adjacent to this. Okay. And I guess the other concern that I have is initially, and this was way back in the day, there was like a river that actually ran through that property, the part that goes 
closer down Harrison, um, we do have a lot of migrating birds and stuff that still come through there. And I wonder what will happen to that um, if this proposed rezoning occurs um, and how that will be accounted for. We can uh, we can check on that for you as we uh, get back to our petitioner. So that's a good question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And is there any other uh, uh, comments uh, that you would like to make on this item? Uh, no, I think that's it for me for now. Thank you for listening. Thank you. We really appreciate your comments and uh, we are all listening and we're going to uh, take those into consideration as we uh, move forward with this. And I just want to see if there's anyone else in the audience that uh, wishes to speak on this item so that we can make sure everyone is heard. Uh, we have Sean Kelly, who has their hand raised. Hi there. Hi, good My evening. My name's Don Kelly. I live at 14453 Lions, so I will butt up to this development on the east side. Uh, Mr. Priest, a couple of speakers ago, said that the drain system should be able to handle any flooding. I can tell you just with the school parking lot, several houses along Lyons on my side of the street had flooding every spring and any every heavy rain to where our neighbor lost all their trees in their backyard. We lost one big maple and that was just with the school. I'm extremely concerned about what the flooding will be once we have 39 houses built behind us. So and for that reason and the pollution and the Linden traffic, I am extremely opposed to this development. Well, thank you, Mr. Kelly. We're gonna talk uh, with the petitioner about flooding and water management, but uh, suffice it to say, uh, one, one of the things that usually happens with these types of developments, as you can see, even on the conceptual plan, there's a large retention basin and the, the county has very, very strict uh, guidelines as to how water is to be managed on property when it's redeveloped. Uh, and this, these are new guidelines that have come in in the last uh, uh, dozen or two years, a uh, uh, couple dozen years, uh, and also how, how quickly that water is, is discharged from the property. So it has to be retained for a certain period of time and discharged at a certain rate to uh, try to minimize the uh, strain on sewer systems and, and so on. And it's, we'll talk more about that uh, this evening, but just to give you a little idea that, uh, that there is a consideration that does get put into uh, water management uh, when properties are developed uh, in the last 10 to 20 years. So something that wasn't done many, many, many moons ago. Okay. Well, thank you for listening. Well, you're welcome and thank you for your comments. And we do have some other folks in the audience who wish to speak, so we're gonna give them a chance. Uh, we have Mrs. Franklin, uh, I believe who has her hand up, so we'll unmute her. We'll give her a chance to speak. Uh, Ms. Franklin, you can unmute yourself uh, by clicking mute <coughs> somewhere on your, uh, there you go. I think you're good, we hear you. Hi. Again, my name is Ms. Franklin. I live at 28029 Linden Street. I am right next to the proposed property. I have two questions. My first question is, if the committee approves for rezoning for R1, in the future, will the developers have an opportunity to request to be rezoned to an R2? So your question is, if it's if we approve rezoning to R1, can it be, can they come back and add and change it to an R2? Is that your question? Yes, it is. Mr. Tarmina, do you want to explain uh, sure. how zoning levels work? Yeah. So the R1 classification um, establishes minimum lot sizes that are smaller than R2. So if the developer um, wanted to construct uh, homes on larger lots, they could do that. Uh, so if they came back with a plan with lots that were larger than the minimum sizes established in the R1 district, they could do that without rezoning to R2. 
uh, of course, it's always something they could do. Uh, I don't know what the purpose would be. If, if the R1 zoning is created, there's nothing that prohibits them from building on larger lots without having to go through a rezoning process. So the, okay. the, basic, the basic idea is uh, this is the minimum sizes that are being set. If, if they choose to build uh, larger lots, they can do that, but they can't go to smaller lots. Yeah, yeah, just for your edification, the R2 requires minimum lot sizes of 70 feet by 120 feet. Uh, so 10 feet larger or wider than what the R1 requires. Okay, hopefully that uh, uh, makes it clear for you, Ms. Franklin. Thank you, that answers my first question. Now my second question is again dealing with sewage. Um, I am the property that has um, the entryway both to my driveway as well as to the side of my house in which there's access for water and everything that you actually do need in order to connect. Um, years before, there was a repair that was done in that area and um, I haven't received any flooding of that nature. But my question is, there was only a school there with 39 more houses and more usage for sewage and water and things of that nature. Has there been a study done in terms of it's okay to put 39 houses there without stressing the system? That is a question that we'll, we can uh, pass along to the developers and they can talk a little bit about uh, what infrastructure is in place and what changes, if any, that they would need to make uh, when we get a chance to go back to the developers and, and speak to them in a few moments. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there any other comments or questions that you'd like to pass along to us while, while you have a chance? Oh no, just thank you. Those are my, those were my two questions. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Franklin, for your questions. We will try to get those. Uh, well, we got one of them answered and we'll try to get the other one answered for you as well this evening. So thank you for attending this evening and uh, you can continue to listen and uh, we'll go to our next person who wishes to speak, uh, which is Carolyn. Uh, well, we had Carolyn Johnson. There we go. Good evening, uh, Ms. Johnston. Hi, I'm Carolyn Johnston. I live at 14225 Lions. And my backyard is directly um, by Dooley Park. Um, <clears throat> I guess my my concern, one, I'm not looking forward to having hundreds of new cars driving down my street. A hundred new cars driving down my street. Um, I, I'm not looking forward to not hearing baseball, but that detention pond is the thing that bothers me because behind my house is where a lake forms every time it rains. And my house is not that far from that detention pond. Um, I also think that this Dooley Park is going to have way too many people in it um, once all of those houses are built. And I, I've been here 30 years. And um, I, I loved having the, the school there, but the thought of having all those houses and if I'm an R1 and I have small lots, there really isn't anything from preventing the developer from thinking about putting in um, uh, attached condos or apartments, which is definitely not what I would like in my neighborhood. Yeah, those, the attached condos or apartments would not be permitted in this zoning. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that happening. Okay. Uh, I, d I just don't know um, where all those people are. I, I don't know. It just seems like a lot of people. I don't know. I'm going to look out my backyard and see two-story houses. Um, and I'm not sure how that's going to affect my property value since I live in a house that is um, 64 years old. And that's a very valid question and, and we'll talk to the developer about that and uh, hopefully they'll have some 
uh, information about how that affects property values in the neighboring area. Okay. So thank you, Ms. Uh, Johnson, for your comments. We, we appreciate you attending this evening. And uh, we ask that you continue to uh, uh, listen in and we'll go to the next person who wishes to speak. And I do have uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Franklin is asking to speak again and Mr. Uh, Mr. Priest, I'm gonna go to Mr. Priest. He already spoke once, but we're gonna give him another uh, chance to speak and then we'll wrap up the comments here. Good evening, Mr. Priest again. Hello. Uh, when we design a subdivision and a subdivision is built, we're required to come up with a drainage pattern for the entire subdivision. All the water, rainwater that comes onto the site will be diverted into the pond. And uh, typically when there was a school site there, they really didn't have any uh, requirements for the school to grade their proper property. And uh, for example, these all these lots that back up to us on Lyons Avenue, I made the lots deeper on our subdivision so that we could provide a swale running north and south and we'll put uh, catch basins in at various points to pick up any water so that none of the water will go into the backyards that are there. The swale will be lower than the grade of, at the fence, which most of that is a fence. Uh, schools didn't really provide much drainage uh, other than to drain their parking lots and uh, the area immediately around the school but the requirements are much different for a subdivision. And uh, we will not be causing any drainage to go easterly to the backyards of those people. That's, that's, that's that in a nutshell. Well, that's a good point, Mr. Priest. And, and that is something that we've seen over the years that, uh, uh, and it, it, it takes a little bit of um, thought to understand this from an engineering perspective, but. But typically, when a when a property is developed, people think that it, it will often cause more water issues. When the reality is, um, the roofs and and gutter systems and uh, swales and catch basins and so on actually uh, tend to provide a better water management solution than just open land or certainly a, a large parking lot area where water just sheds right into uh, other people's yards. So those are those are all good points. Um, thank you uh, for your comments again. I'm going to go to uh, Ms. Franklin, who also wants to make an additional comment. We do want to uh, get back to our developer and our petitioner and uh, get answers to some of these questions. So uh, we do ask that we try not to have too many repeat uh, questions. But uh, Ms. Franklin, uh, you had some additional information you wanted to provide. Uh, let me. Uh, let you unmute yourself then. Good okay. Evening. Good evening again. Thank you for allowing me to speak one more time. Of course. Um, I had an opportunity to go to some of the meetings for the development that is across the street, the new one, and yes. they did ask for the R1 first, and then after much planning, things had changed that it became an R2. And I noticed that you had said for this development that um, it will stay an R1. Is that something that will actually, when it's approved, be stated that it has to be an R1? Uh, what, what the petitioner has requested, Ms. Franklin, is R1 zoning. Uh, right. We do not have to approve that. We can, uh, we can deny this uh, request. We can, we can approve or recommend that it be R2 or some other uh, form of zoning. Uh, and mind you, our... Uh, at the Planning Commission, our recommendation is simply that. It's a recommendation that then goes on the City Council, and City Council will ultimately approve uh, or deny the request. Uh, and again, there's opportunities for it to change from R1 to R2 if that's what the City Council wishes to, to do. Uh, your example is actually a very good one of the development to the north where the petitioner asked for R1, but uh, it was felt that it was not appropriate and R2 would be a better zoning. Uh, for those lot sizes, so uh, so that's what was approved. Uh, so so that's 
no decision's been made at this point yet, but you will be uh, hearing a decision made as far as a recommendation from us, which will then go on to city council this evening. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and Ms. Shockling also uh, would like to uh, make an additional comment, so I'll, I'll let her do that. Thank you, I, I appreciate the extra time. I just have a quick question um, for the developer about the bioswale and retention basin. Um, and that would be, is, is it going to be open or is there something that's going to go around the perimeter to you know prevent children from going into it since the park's right there? So I was just kind of wondering if they could explain a little bit more of what that bioswale is gonna look like. Thank you. Well, that's an excellent question. We will uh, we will pass that along to to the petitioner. Mr. Uh, they Chief. may not have all the details of that yet at this point because again we're talking zoning, but uh, uh, they may have some information about that. So we'll see what they can provide. And Mr. Chairman, if if not, it certainly uh, will will uh, uh, be part of the site plan, Mr. Tormina. Yeah, and and before we have the uh, petitioner comment on this, I just want to uh, caution that uh, you know this is this what whatever their intentions are is not necessarily the way it's going to be approved uh, certainly because our engineering department has not had a chance to review this so if they determine for example that a swell is not appropriate at that location that it needs to be um, a storm sewer uh, or of a different design uh, then then we should wait to hear that we can he can tell us what his intentions are at this stage conceptually but in fact uh, that could very well change. So I just want to make that clear to everybody, including the petitioner. No, that's a good point, Mr. Tormey, and I appreciate that. So uh, yeah, everything is very conceptual at this point in terms of anything that you see on the screen or the zoning, or excuse me, of the site plan. Uh, we strictly are gonna be talking zoning as far as decision-making this evening. So uh, I just wanna reiterate that, so thank you. Uh, I don't see anyone else in our audience wishing to speak on this item. So we're going to go back to, uh, 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 well, Mr. McCabe is going to ask for one additional uh, comment or question. So we'll give him a chance and then he'll be our last last one this evening. And then we'll go back to our petitioner. Uh, Mr. McCabe, you can unmute yourself. Good evening. Yeah, thanks for the extra chance. Um, we were talking about zoning tonight, but there are a lot of technical questions that I had. I skipped because we're talking zoning. Will there be another chance to talk the technical aspects? Because I do have a lot of questions. Yes, definitely there will be. Uh, what we're going to decide tonight is our recommendation on zoning. That will then go on to city council, uh, where they will they will make a decision as well. Typically, what happens is the city council uh, will will make a motion and then they basically hold the process until a site plan then is developed. That site plan uh, process then starts back with us again. It'll come to the planning commission. And that's really where we're gonna noodle out the details of this layout that you see, the retention basin, the appearance of the homes, all those types of things will be discussed in detail. And, and it certainly will be a chance for uh, all our audience members to participate again in that. Uh, and then when we make a recommendation based on the site plan that we see, that also will then go to city council for approval. So there's gonna be uh, basically four shots at this, uh, two at the planning commission, two at city council. And uh, the first, first set of uh, uh, decisions are for zoning and the second set of decisions are for site plan. So I hope that, that makes it perfectly clear. It does, thank you. Well, I appreciate uh, your question. Thank you uh, for asking. And with that, I'm going to go back to uh, uh, Mr. Michelson or uh, any of the other uh, petitioners that are with us this evening. And you've heard a number of questions that have been asked uh, and, and comments from the audience regarding uh, traffic in the area, uh, the capacity of the infrastructure, uh, and some flooding concerns. And if you'd like to address any of those this evening, you can. Again, we're, we're trying to not get too deep into site plans because that's not what's before us, but uh, uh, obviously we have some folks that live in the area and have some uh, valid concerns and points to make. So we want to make sure that they're uh, uh, included in this process. So is there anything that you would like to add on this? Uh, uh, what's been uh, so far? Let me um, first say that um, I understand all the concerns. We've been doing this, uh, I've been doing this for close to 40 years. 
And we go through this with all the developments that we're proposing either for rezoning or for site plan approval. So I, I, I'm well aware of all the concerns of all the residents surrounding this. Um, just a couple in general comments. One is when we develop a community like Mike Priest was just saying, we actually improve the drainage. So the neighbors that have had problems with when the school was there, those problems are gonna go away because we're gonna have underground storm sewers, we're gonna have catch basins, we're gonna have, um, each house will have a, a, a sump and it'll be outletted into a underground storm sewer, not on the property. Um, so it actually improves any issues that they may have had. And that's something that um, our engineer will work with the city engineer and they'll come up with a great plan. And plus it's been mentioned, we, we retain all the water in the detention and then it outlets at a slower pace underground into the uh, storm sewer system. So I can put their mind at ease that it's, it's really gonna improve any problems that any of these homeowners have had nearby. The other thing we find is nobody wants to see the land behind them that's vacant improved. It was that way when their subdivision got developed. The people that was next to their subdivision felt the same way. And, but it really works out very well in the long run. And what happens is we put in some nice housing um, and the property values surrounding in the surrounding areas actually improve, they go up. So we, we, we do a lot for the community. And, and I know that they're reticent about this, but that's the way it has always worked. And it, it fills in nicely. The, um, there's, as far as um, on Linden, well, we have 10 lots on, that are gonna be on Harrison. So there's um, uh, 29 that'll be entering on Linden. And it's really not a lot of traffic. I know it's hard to explain, but people go, come and go at different times. People are home during the day, they're working at home now. So you, you don't get the traffic that you think you're gonna get. And I know it's hard to convince you of that, but it's really true that you don't get a lot of traffic because you're all, people are coming and going at different times too. So, you know, I, I just feel that um, understanding the concerns of something new coming your way, it's, it's really, it, if you research it further, you'll see that it's, it, it actually is a big improvement. Mike Priest can, he's already spoken on the drainage issues, but he can go, you know, he can, he can verify that that's, he was the city engineer at one time many years ago, and he does um, our engineering on this, uh, he's gonna do the engineering on this site, and it's worked out very well. So I don't know if anybody uh, from our group has anything to add to that. Thank you, Mr. Michelson. We, we appreciate those additional comments. Are there any questions at this point from any of the commissioners uh, for our petitioners? I don't see any questions for our petitioner. Is there anyone else? Uh, uh, oh, actually, I did want to make one, one comment. Uh, which is uh, in regard to some of the, the questions from the audience, uh, some of the residents who live in that area who address the use of this property and uh, the school's sale of it. I just, just wanted to point out uh, that uh, the city has no, uh, had no involvement in the sale of this property or the choice of the school district to sell this property uh, in, not use it as a school any longer. That was a choice made by the uh, by the school board. And uh, once that property has been sold to a private uh, party, whoever that party is, uh, they now own that property and they have property rights to use that property as they feel uh, best for them. If they chose to buy it and keep it parkland, they could do that uh, and pay the taxes on it uh, 
and leave it open if they chose to develop it uh, for residential use. Uh, that's what they they did in this case, and they're certainly doing it to gain profit and to make money, uh, just like any of the other property uh, throughout the city that's that's improved and developed um, over the course of time, including the subdivisions that you live in. So um, that is uh, private property rights in, in a nutshell. And as much as uh, uh, it would be nice to keep all these open areas open, uh, that was a decision made by the school district and uh, we had no involvement in it. Uh, all we can do at this point is say, uh, what type of zoning is appropriate for, uh, for this property? Uh, we can't keep it public land because it's not publicly owned anymore. Uh, so it needs to be rezone, rezoned to something appropriate. And uh, what we have before us is requests for R1 residential. So that's what we're going to uh, decide on. Uh, so I just wanted to make that point uh, and uh, just help educate uh, anyone in the audience who uh, had asked about uh, the school district's decision to sell the property. So uh, if there's anyone else uh, on the commission with any questions or comments for our petitioner, if not, uh, I will close the public hearing and a motion would be in order. Mr. Chair? Uh, Mrs. Smiley. Yes, I'll make a, an approving resolution that the request to rezone the property is at 14416 Harrison Avenue and 28201 Linden Avenue, former Adams Elementary School site from PL to R1 is hereby approved subject to the city council approval for the following reasons, that the proposed change of zoning is compatible to and in harmony with the surrounding residential uses and zoning districts in the area, that the proposed change of zoning will provide for a single family residential development similar in density to what exists in the neighborhood, neighboring area, that the proposed change of zoning is consistent with the existing character of the area, that the proposed zoning change does not obstruct the goals, policies, and objectives of the future land use plan, and that the proposed change of zoning of the subject property represents a reasonable and logical zoning transformation, which adheres to the principles of sound land use planning. I muted myself, sorry about that. Thank oh, you, Ms. Okay. Smiley. Is there a support for that motion? Support. Support. All right, I heard Mrs. McHugh first. So we have a motion from Mrs. Smiley, uh, supported by Mrs. McHugh. Is there any discussion on the motion to approve a rezoning to R1? Hearing no discussion, if the secretary is ready, please call the roll. Mrs. Smiley. Aye. Mrs. McHugh. Aye. Mr. Long. Aye. Mr. Ventura. Aye. Chair Magno votes aye. Chairman Rolshaw. Votes aye, and the motion passes. Uh, the recommendation of R1 zoning will go on to City Council for their, their uh, approval. And then, of course, as I mentioned before, uh, we'll be seeing our petitioner back for uh, site plan details at a future date. So, anyone in the audience wishing to follow this item, please continue to follow this to city council. You'll also have an opportunity to speak there to the council and all comments that you made this evening will also be included in our detailed minutes that will be passed to city council. So thank you for attending this evening and thank you uh, to our petitioner, Mr. Michelson and, and your team for attending this evening. Thank you, I appreciate the opportunity. All right, thank you. I think we're all set with this item. So good evening to uh, you folks, and we will go on to our other public hearing this evening, uh, item number two, Mr. Secretary. And that is petition 2020-07-02-06, submitted by Ed Bison, requesting waiver use approval pursuant to section 11.03C4 of the City of Livonia Zoning Ordinance number 543 as amended, to operate a limited service restaurant with drive up window facilities, Big B Coffee, within the Livonia Crossroads Retail Center at 11502 Middlebelt Road, located in the southeast corner of Middlebelt and Plymouth Roads in the northwest corner of Section 36. 
Thank you, Mr. Caramagno. Uh, Mr. Tormina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, this is a request to operate a limited service restaurant with drive up window facilities. It is at the Livonia Crossroads Shopping Center, which is at the southeast corner of Plymouth and Middle Belt Roads. Uh, this shopping center contains roughly 23,000 square feet of leasable space. And as you can see from the zoning map, it is zoned C2, a general business. The site is surrounded by uh, commercial properties. The petitioner is seeking uh, your approval to operate a limited service restaurant uh, pursuant to section 1103C of the zoning ordinance. Uh, this Big B coffee restaurant would be classified as a limited service restaurant because its interior seating capacity is less than 30. And in this case, it would be 24. Uh, the proposed restaurant would occupy a vacant 1,700 square foot space, which is in the northeast corner of the building. This unit faces north towards Plymouth Road. Uh, the floor plan submitted with the application shows uh, how the restaurant uh, would be uh, divided up between the dining area, the service counter, kitchen, storage facilities, bathroom, and other, and other rooms. Uh, there is no outdoor seating proposed uh, with the restaurant. A drive up window is shown along the east side of the building. Uh, the traffic lane serving the drive up would loop around the south and east sides of the building. Uh, drive ups are required to have waiting space for at least four cars, not including the vehicle space that is directly at the pickup window. And in this case, the length of the drive behind the building is more than sufficient to meet this requirement. Uh, however, the real concern is that not enough clearance exists between the building to include both a drive up traffic lane and a bypass lane, which is required. Uh, since this area is currently used for a variety of services, including utilities, trash pickup, and loading and unloading. Uh, I'll note that uh, there's quite a lot of discussion about this at the study me meeting and the petitioner is working on making changes to provide enough space so that cars in the drive through and other service vehicles can safely maneuver behind the building. Uh, additionally, uh, the parking lot uh, would be reconfigured to facilitate better traffic flow for both the patrons of the drive up as well as other businesses in the shopping center. At this time, there are no exterior changes proposed for the building other than signage. Uh, the restaurant would be allowed one wall sign, no larger than 57 square feet. Plan shows two wall signs, one on the front of the building facing Plymouth, and then another in the southwest corner of the shopping center facing Middle Belt. This one is uh, primarily needed to help direct traffic uh, to the drive through So with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I will read out the correspondence. Yes, please. I uh, think the first item dated July 20th is from our engineering division and it reads in accordance with your request. The engineering division has reviewed the above reference petition. We have no objections to the proposed waiver use at this time. The existing parcel was assigned the range of addresses from 11500 to 11516 Middle Belt Road and 29223 Plymouth Road while the overall parcel was assigned the address of 11500 Middle Belt. The existing parcel is currently serviced by public water main, sanitary sewer, and storm sewer. The information submitted does not show proposed alterations for the utility services, so it does not appear that there will be any impacts to the existing systems. It should be noted that if any work is to be completed in the Plymouth Road or Middle Belt Road rights of way, the owner will be need to obtain permits from MDOT, or Wayne County. That letter is signed by David Lear, Assistant City Engineer. Next, we have a letter of no objection coming from uh, the Livonia Fire and Rescue. That letter is signed by Greg Thomas, uh, Fire Marshal. That's dated July 28th. Next, a letter from our Traffic Safety Bureau uh, that reads, I have reviewed the plans in connection with the petition. I have the following concerns regarding the layout. The alleyway behind the business on the south side is only wide enough to suit one-way traffic. I personally drove through the alley and observed it to be just wide enough to fit only one vehicle going in either direction at a time. The proposition of utilizing a drive through lane along the east side of the building does not seem feasible as there needs to be room for delivery traffic to reach the businesses located in the complex immediately to the east of Big B Coffee. I am also concerned with vehicles exiting from the drive through attempting to make a left turn onto, Plymouth, onto westbound Plymouth. The driveway is very close to the intersection at Middle Belt, which has a high volume of traffic. I believe there is a safety issue with vehicles trying to turn left from that driveway. 
I believe these areas need to be addressed and improved to allow the proper operation of the business and the flow of traffic around it. And that letter is signed by Scott Chapansky, Sergeant of the Traffic Bureau. That letter was dated uh, July 28th. Next is a letter that comes from the Inspection Department dated August 25th that reads, pursuant to your request, the above reference petition has been reviewed and the following is noted. Number one, there are several egress doors that exit out of adjoining suites that will be hindered based on the proposed drive-through lane. There does not appear to be enough width to the east side of the building to accommodate the drive-through. There are also gas meters located on the east side of the building that would be required to be protected from regular traffic. And number two, a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals would be required for the signage as proposed. This department has no further objections to this petition. That letter is signed by Jerome Hanna, Director of Inspection. Next, we have a letter from our Finance Department. That letter is dated uh, July 28th and it reads, Dear Mr. Miller, I have reviewed the address connected with the above noted petition. The following amounts are due to the city of Livonia. Unpaid water and sewer charges, $629.74, $339.29 past due as of May 11th, 2020. Total due to the city of Livonia, $629. Please contact me if you have any further questions. That letter is signed by Connie Cumpula. Chief Accountant. Next is a letter of no objection coming from our, the Office of the Treasurer. That letter is dated August 4th and signed by Linda Scheel, Treasurer of the City of Livonia. And uh, lastly, we have two emails from residents. The first one is from a Jeanette Page uh, dated August 16th, uh, who gives her address as uh, 29148 Elmira Street. And it reads, regarding the petition to add a Big B coffee at the corner of Middle Belt and Plymouth Roads, I do have a concern. There have been two other Big B coffees located on Plymouth Road and both went out of business. There was one at Farmington and Plymouth and the other was, just lo was located just across the street from the proposed location of Middle Belt and Plymouth. If two other coffee shops failed within the same area, why is it necessary to build another one? Also, the original location at Plymouth and Middle Belt did have a drive through why can't a location be found with an existing and vacant property to be used? FYI, I didn't find Bigby to be that good and will never use it again. I'm wondering if that is the reason the other two closed. Thank you for letting me voice my concerns. And lastly, we have an email from a Megan Ellis uh, dated September 1st that reads, to the Planning Commission, this is my letter discussing why I'm against having a Bigby built near my house. I feel if the Big B is built on that corner, it would increase traffic at the corner, leading to not being able to turn off Elmira onto Middle Belt. It's hard enough to be let into Middle to be let into Middle Belt now. A drive-through at the corner would just be a disaster. Also, the intersection of Plymouth and Middle Belt is the most dangerous in the city and does not need more traffic. Many people who do not live in the condos cut through the alley. Traffic around the Big B could lead to more drivers cutting through the alley too fast, putting the kids that live here in danger. Speaking of kids being in danger, there is a bus stop just a block down from the corner. It's visible from where the shop would be. I don't think we need an influx of strangers near the bus stop. People already jump into Middle Belt, making a left from the driveway next to the smoothie place. It's so dangerous and there is no traffic light there. More people will try to drive across Middle Belt from that driveway to the Big B. It will bring more noise into the condos and litter into the street. We already have enough litter blow in from the road. Does Mr. Boyson know that a Big B went out of business across the street where the smoothie place is? If his Big B goes out of business, we will have an abandoned building next to the condos. No one wants that. This concludes my letter. I hope the Planning Commission will consider the items in my letter. Again, that's uh, Megan Ellis, condo resident. And that is the extent of the correspondence, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Taramina. Uh, is there any questions for our planning staff? No questions. Uh, we do have our petitioner here this evening, Mr. Boyson, and uh, also the property owner, uh, Mr. Hoba, is here. Good evening, Mr. Boyson. Hello. Uh, good evening. How is everybody? Good evening. We're good. Thank you. Um, so, um, I do have with me um, a few others. So Mike Huba, who is the property owner, he purchased the property, I believe, uh, 
earlier this year in January. Um, I do have another person, his name is Bob Perry. Uh, he owns a number of Bigby Coffee stores, one being Livonia. And he's also um, in charge of supporting existing stores and helping new stores um, start up uh, within Wayne County. And then I have another person, um, Diane Parker. She is another uh, Bigby Coffee owner who is in Flat Rock. And she's also a tenant of another, uh, at another property that uh, Mr. Mike Kuba owns. Um, for myself, um, I own one uh, Bigby Coffee location in Livonia. It's along, um, on the corner of Ann Arbor Road in Newburgh. Basically, um, my- I think I lost a uh, voice here. Oh, hello? No, we, we still hear you. We're good. Okay. Um, about seven years ago, um, just to give you a little bit of what Bigby Coffee is about, um, you know, they, they're a Michigan-based company. Um, they're focused on quality products through sustainable farming throughout the world, clean label ingredients, and of course, the people. Um, myself and my wife, Eileen, you know, our business philosophy that a business purpose in a community is to serve the people around it. Um, and it's not just the products or things to sell. Um, that's really about what we can do to, you know, be an asset to the community, help the people around us, which is why uh, we, you know, chose Big Me Coffee seven years ago um, when we were evaluating different concepts because they put such a focus on the community. Um, a little bit about myself, I grew up in Livonia. Um, I went through the Livonia schools, graduated from Stevenson High School. I still live in Livonia. Um, my address is 9289 Liberty Court. Um, the reason why I chose Livonia to put, I, you know, the first and now the second is because I, I, I believe that, um, you know, I want to give back to the community uh, through Big B Coffee um, to address some of the concerns about um, the, the Bigby Coffee that was there on Plymouth Road and Middle Belt um, before. To be honest, um, I don't know that owner. I know he's no longer in the in the system, owning a franchise. Um, I know that he was not a part active participant in his business, which is what with any small business, if the owner checks out, it declines. Um, obviously, I feel that it's going to be different with me because of how I run a business, uh, how I am with the community. You know, I work with the Bonnie Public Schools to do fundraising for the kids, for their, you know, their sports teams, um, events that they have in school, things like that. Um, I'm a part of the Chamber of Commerce. You know, I've worked with Livonia Lions Club to donate food to St. Mary's um, staff, you know, especially during the beginning of the, the pandemic. Um, I am a secretary on the board of directors for the Community Alliance Credit Union, which is also in Livonia. Um, and I really believe that um, I am an asset to, to the city because I want to give back. Um, now, to be able to do that um, and to be able to keep my doors open, the need for a drive through is it's, it's very important. Um, my first location in the other side of Livonia does not have a drive through and it's just hanging up, to be honest. Um, you know, we'll be six years there. We're doing what we can. Um, but a drive through is needed before the pandemic. It's especially needed now. And I think the landscape of the, you know, the food and the retail industry is changing because of what we're going through. Um, and a drive through is more, it, it's even more important to, to have. Um, I've asked, you know, Bob Perry to, to, to come here to speak tonight because he does know some, you know, overall figures without giving away any confidential information, you know, how it goes with having a drive through store sales wise and not having a drive through, um, and what we're seeing the differences are, um, for Diane Parker, you know, she's going to, to testify to that as well, because when she first opened her store, uh, believe about five years ago, um, she didn't have a drive through You know, she was in the middle of a plaza and, you know, like myself, the business was struggling. Um, and so she made the decision to open a drive through um, So she worked with the city of Flat Rock to 
overcome some challenges and she was able to open. Um, so that's one thing that I would like Diane to speak to. And the second is, you know, Livonia is a beautiful city. Um, you know, I think the city does a good job in requiring uh, landscaping and green space and, you know, beautifying a property. And, you know, Plymouth and Middle Belt, the, the intersection there is one of the highest profile uh, intersections in the city. So we need to make it look nice. Um, so Diane, um, in that plaza where she's in, in Flat Rock, she's experienced how um, it was before uh, Mr. Huba purchased the property and after and what improvements he's done to the property to make it look nice and attractive and safe um, for the, you know, of course, the customers and the neighboring, you know, residents in the community. Um, so just to go through this plan, um, I know there was a lot of discussion last week at the study meeting. So we have revised some of our um, plan, on, as you can see here. Um, so one of the biggest concerns was landscaping around the property. So you can see noted here, there are some more islands that, that say landscaping. Um, you know, I know Mike is working with his landscaper to see things like mulch, um, plants, bushes, things like that, that will, um, you know, be able to resist, you know, they're, I guess they're hardy um, so that they can, you know, beautify the property. Um, on the south side, the south alley, uh, we've designated that to be a one-way traffic because it is about 20 feet and nine inches. So it's enough for one car to go through. Um, coming around the corner, there was a concern of a blind corner when you make a left turn to the east alley. So we have um, put in a, we're going to put in a large mirror um, on, the, on the southeast corner to be able to see as you're coming along that alley around the corner to see if there's cars or any obstruction. Um, so as you come around the corner, there is an order station there. Um, the other thing that was caused for concern was the width of the alley on the east side. Um, currently it is uh, 21 and a half feet. So what we're going to do is to um, the bollards that are present that are protecting the meters, we're going to move them six inches towards the building because um, right now they're two and a half feet. Um, so by doing that, it will still give two feet from the, the building to the bollard, allow room for the meter to protect the meter and open up 22 feet from the edge of the bollard to the other building, which uh, from my understanding is enough for two cars to fit side by side. There is an egress um, or easement agreement between this property and the one adjacent that allows for traffic to pass back and forth to for both properties. Um, one of the other things uh, that to note is the dumpster location was turned um, so that the garbage truck would not have to pass through the adjacent property like it does now. And um, they're going to build an enclosure, a brick enclosure. Um, and you can see here on the right side of the, the site plan, um, the, I guess the schematic of the, the gate, uh, the, the enclosure for the dumpster. Um, so that way it's not an eyesore as you come around the corner. Of course, lighting would be, um, would be redone in the, in the alley to make it bright and safe. Of course, being mindful of adjacent properties, you know, we don't want any light to spill over into the south or east um, unnecessarily. So of course, shroud to be um, installed. In terms of exiting the building through the back doors uh, for garbage disposal, we will um, target to look to dispose of garbage at lower times of the day or um, another alternative is to store the garbage inside the unit um, and dispose of it after um, after close of business. And we do close by nine o'clock. So, you know, any traffic would be done by then. Um, otherwise, um, there are some directional signs throughout the plaza to help cars navigate through the, through the parking lot to find um, the drive-through um, access um, around the building. Um, and 
yeah, I believe that covers most of the things there. So, I, um, you know, I like uh, the people I had invited <laughs> to speak on uh, on this behalf, um, between Mike, Bob, and Diane, if you guys could uh, give your comments. Well, thank you, Mr. Boyce. And uh, they are, uh, all, all your uh, invited guests are with us this evening and they are able to speak. Uh, Mr. Perry, I believe is already unmuted. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening, and uh, uh, you guys can hear me well, I hope. We do. Excellent. So uh, mine is a brief comment, but I think an important one. Uh, the reason why a drive through store or a Big B drive through is critical at, at this point in time is uh, I did some running of data for August 2020 uh, for Southeast Michigan drive through stores uh, compared with non drive through Big B Coffee locations. The drive through stores had 46% more sales than the non drive through stores. Uh, that averaged out to about $790 more per day in sales, which in the coffee business is uh, a significant amount of sales. That's, that's, uh, that's do or die type uh, numbers for a, uh, a coffee shop of the size of a Big B Coffee. So that's very important. The drive through stores are growing uh, their sales at a 37.8% clip on average. Uh, the non drive through stores are in negative uh, sales growth and negative 7.5% sales growth. So uh, there is a uh, massive difference, a significant difference between a drive through location and a non drive through location, uh, particularly given the, uh, uh, the state we find ourselves with the pandemic. And uh, I just thought that those type of numbers would be relevant for a discussion of why it is so critical that uh, you know this location be allowed to have a drive through. I think one of the questions in the last study session was, uh, could it be um, opened without having the drive through window? And I think the numbers I just quoted uh, show why uh, we feel passionately that the, the drive through um, is absolutely essential for this location, uh, given the state of affairs we find ourselves in. And that's all the comments I have today, unless there's questions. Thank you, Mr. Perry, uh, for your comments and, and that uh, data that you provided as well. Uh, if we don't have any questions for you at this point, we'll let some of the other folks speak and we can always circle back to you. Uh, Ms. Parker, good, good evening. Hi, good evening. Thank you for letting me speak. I'm. Um, the owner of the Big B Coffee in Flat Rock, Michigan. And I opened my store in March of 2016 as a non drive through store. I am located in the middle of a plaza, similar to what you have there, but mine's more of a, a straight plaza, approximately 25 feet off the road, and we have parking in the back. So that allowed me to do a drive through that's a little bit um, different from what yours is. I had, of course, I was had to meet the challenge of being in the middle of the plaza. And um, we had initially thought to go around the building like your plan, but um, I met with some uh, safety concerns and the city of Flat Rock actually sat with me and I and Mike Huba, my landlord, and helped us to work around the concerns about safety to work with my business to allow me to open that drive through And I did so in November of 2018. So I've had my drive through less than a year and a half. And to differentiate Bob Perry's numbers on what a drive-through does for an existing store that gets a drive-through, not one that's been a drive-through for the whole time. My August numbers were 66% increase in gross and a 68.9% increase in net. And that's over last year with a drive-through. I say those numbers not to brag, but to say that they wouldn't have been that high, but for COVID. Um, it's a new generation, a new way of doing things, and, and people are, are looking to 
minimize whatever amount of contact they can have. Um, my second point is um, Mike Huba as a landlord. He's an unknown entity to you, and he was an unknown entity to me when I first opened my business. I actually signed with a different landlord and found out I had a new landlord one month later. And I had addressed all my concerns with my, my present landlord when I occupied my space, but I had raised issues about lighting, curb appeal, and the like. And Mike Huba had just bought the building and I was really thrilled to see how the first thing he did was fix the lighting because that's a security issue. It's a safety issue. Um, when we did the drive-through, we worked with the city on putting deflectors on the lighting because I do not have a wall in the back of mine, my where my drive-through is, but I have residential homes about 100 feet away, and they were concerned about both noise and lighting, and we worked with the city to tackle every one of those issues. And we've We've never had any complaints, which is nice, but we've also had many compliments because we did a lot of landscaping in the back, putting up Arbovita to hide uh, a dumpster um, where the garbage is. It, it's, not, it's not something everybody wants to see from the backyard. So Mike's landscapers put in Arbovita. They did a lot of landscaping around where my drive through was so that the people that were coming up through the drive through also got a very aesthetically ple pleasing um, visit. And approximately two years ago, after he'd owned the building for a couple of years, he also did a major remodel of painting um redesign it was um it was it brightened up the building and it's now one of the the premier buildings in flat rock if you have any questions i'll be more than happy to answer anything well thank you miss parker uh, for your comments if we have any questions for mrs parker i think uh we'll probably be asking them shortly but uh, if there is nothing at the moment, uh, we'll that's fine. We'll let's let you stand by there, and uh, you can uh, chime in if you need to. Uh, okay. So thanks, thank you for your comments. Uh, I think the uh, oiler person on the team uh, is Mr. Hoba, uh, who is also able to speak this evening. So good evening, sir. Good evening, thank you. Welcome you... back uh, to our voting meeting tonight. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? We hear you. Okay, good. Yeah, hello everyone. I think Ed and Diane and Bob, they did a wonderful job of explaining, especially the changes that uh, were of concern. Um, and, you know, like Diane said, you know, we, we look at, we value every property, we value every tenant. And I'm the type of landlord that, uh, and Diane can testify to this, that when you call me at midnight, I'll answer the phone. Um, we're very dedicated to our properties. Um, our, you know, future, our future, we, we would like to see this property be enhanced. There is a lot of potential here. Um, but one thing we are trying hard for Ed, um, just like I did for Diane, and one thing about Diane, when she approached me about placing a drive-through on Telview Plaza, mm -hmm. I had, I could, I couldn't think of how she wanted to do it. But when we got more involved and uh, she gave me a game plan, we tackled. It was going to work, and you know the city worked with us, of course. You know, there was there was challenges, but we worked them out. Um, same thing with this. Um, I am seeing Ed's passion for this business, and you know, I wanna 
I want to try to make this work as much as possible for him. And just because I can, I, I know what Diane can do and how she operates her business. It is one of the cleanest businesses in, in our shopping center. Um, you know, other than that, uh, I think Ed pretty much, uh, I think he covered all the concerns I'm trying to look. And as far as uh, one of the emails from Megan Ellis about uh, it being abandoned, I think we addressed this issue in our prior uh, meeting, which in the plaza next door, the reason that that big B failed was because of the operator and of the rent being pretty much, uh, I think almost triple of what we are asking. Um, and also we bought this uh, shopping center in February of 2020. Um, this unit has been vacant along with the large unit. Um, you know, because of COVID also, we haven't had much activity. And the activity that we did attain, uh, most of the brokers asked us if we have a drive through So, you know, I understand this wasn't zoned like this uh, when first built. This was 30, 40, almost 50 years ago, maybe. Uh, but the trend has changed and especially like diane uh, pointed out that because of covid her business is booming pretty much are you still there with us mr hoba yes okay okay great uh, i did have a question for you uh the location down in Flat Rock where uh, Ms. Parker is located, is that the uh, Telview Plaza on Telegraph? Yes. Okay, yeah, I I, I see what uh, you did to place a, a drive through in the middle of the back of the store. It's a, it's a very unique design. I, I've never seen anything like it, but it seems to work quite well. So I'm, I was impressed by that. Uh, thank you. And, you know, an another thing that she pointed out was that we, remodeled it and we didn't just you know we made it look uh, we brought it up to modern time uh, it, it wasn't something that the tenants were necessarily asking for we could figure it out a different way to um you know keep it clean but you know we want to do the same thing to this property eventually and um you know if you and actually if you can I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know how to pull it up on Zoom, but if you want to go to our website, taylorinvestment.com, it's just singular, there's no S at that, it's just taylorinvestment.com, and you'll see we have six properties, and we maintain them meticulously. Sure, sure, we'll take a look at that site uh, from our uh, browsers. Uh, we appreciate your comments. I'm sure we may have some questions for you uh, this evening. So uh, just hang on a moment and we'll see if there's any comments or questions from the commission at this point. Uh, any questions or comments for our petitioners this evening? Chairman. Uh, Mr. Ventura. Uh, I'm not sure who I'm gonna address this to. I think it's probably most appropriately to Mr. Yuba, but um, This particular location is in the Plymouth Road corridor that uh, we've all uh, in the city been concerned with um, seeing improvements to and seeing new businesses come to. And so having uh, Big B be interested in coming here um, is, um, I think, well received. However, uh, at the study meeting, we talked about a number of things which I don't see or I have not heard addressed here this evening. Um, for example, we talked about removing the meters from the backs of the buildings to, to make that drive through Eastern Alley uh, as wide as possible. I note that the drawing shows that it's 25 feet wide between the buildings, but it's actually not. I was there today and measured it and it's just under 24 feet. 
Similarly, the dimension on the plan at the uh, southern aisleway is shown as 22 feet. And again, it is not, uh, it's just a bit over 20 feet. Um, and so I, I feel that if there's gonna be a drive-through here, and, and, and I certainly agree with all the testimony from uh, Mr. Huba and, and Mr. Boyson and everybody else about the necessity of a drive-through these days, um, we've got to do everything that we can to make sure that it's number one as wide and and number two um as unobstructed as possible and number three uh as findable as possible and i don't see any notes on the drawing as to how folks are going to be directed to uh locate the fact that there is a drive-through here so um i guess my questions mr uh, i guess mr huba and maybe mr boyson um are what happened to the plans to uh remove the beaters and number two what where what happened where's the where's the signage to show people where to go how to find this uh drive-through okay. and uh Go. Uh, you know, let's let's deal with the facts in terms of the dimensions of the driveways here. Um, they are narrow, and we're going to have to address that. All right. A number of questions have been asked, uh, Mr. Uh, Huba or Mr. Boyson. I don't know which one of you which wishes sure. to answer these. Um, so yes, I mean, on on the plan, it is it does say 24 feet from building to building, um, as it is currently. Um, with the baller, there is room for 21 and a half feet. So we're exploring to, to move the bollards six inches towards um, our building to allow 22 feet. Now, my conversations with um, uh, Mr. Scott Miller and, you know, with, with uh, Mark Tormina, that 22 feet is enough um, space to have two cars side by side. Um, that was our understanding. Um, so that's for our plan to move the bollard over to accommodate the, the 22 feet um, on the east alley. Um, on the south alley, um, you are correct. Um, it does say on the plan that uh, Mr. Carmina has up, it does say 20 feet, um, I believe nine inches. Um, and my understanding as well is 20 feet is the minimum for a one-way traffic, uh, which we've designated here. Um, in regards to the navigational signs throughout the parking lot, they are noted um, right there um, that uh, Mr. Cromie has drive through sign directional. So um, I did submit earlier um, a picture of what you know a sign would look like. Basically, it would say uh, Big B Coffee drive through with an arrow um, pointing in a, in, a, in a certain direction. Um, you know, we can also do arrows. Um, not striped arrows, but you know, on, on, on the pavement, um, directing people where to go to the access the drive through along the south uh, south alley. Um, I don't know if Mike, if you wanted to add anything to that. Um, no, I, I think uh, I think you covered most of our concerns. Except for you did you mentioned there is going to be. 11 feet for a bypass lane and 11 feet for the drive through lane, correct? Correct. Well, I did say 22 feet total. So oh. yeah, it would be 11 feet and 11 feet. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ventura, does that answer your questions? Um, yeah, as far as it goes, uh, the drawing that I'm looking at in our package tonight uh, doesn't have the detail that the one on the screen has. So I didn't see the notations for the signs and the dimensions on the drawing on the screen, again, are different than the ones in the package. So um, I guess the ones on the screen are a little writer than <laughs> the ones in the package that we got uh, electronically. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Ventura, I believe in the last meeting, I'm not sure if anyone mentioned, we, are re we will repay the alley because it is in poor condition. That was a concern as well. Uh, thank good. you. Yes, it was a concern. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you, Mr. Hoba. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Ventura. Mr. Long. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A um, couple questions. So, so I see how you turned the dumpster, and I, and I like that you're addressing that, I guess. And I, I know uh, that uh, Ed said that, uh, you know, you may just hold on to the garbage till the end of the day. But at the study meeting, I believe it was discussed that all of the units in this uh, place would, would use the dumpster. Is that correct? And uh, are you able to limit all of them going out there at, during the day? I, I believe that can be accomplished. Um, the, the one unit that will be affected directly is the disc replay, which is a uh, computer store or a, a gaming store. Um, they're very reasonable and they'll probably, their hours are probably similar to Big D Coffee. They'll, I think they close at 9 p.m. as well. Um, okay. I, you know, I, I did get a verbal from them, which they will agree to some sort of, um, like Ed mentioned, storing the garbage inside until closing time. Okay. Um, do we know, I mean, is there, is that a scheduled pickup or do we have any control over when the, the, uh, the, when they come to pick, when the, the garbage company comes to pick the garbage up? Uh, we're still working towards that. I think we can, I think we can have this scheduled. I, I don't think, uh, yeah. Because obviously that's a concern, right? I mean, if you know they show up at night when you have five cars lined up back there, you know, you're going to have a problem. Uh, there are doors currently, rear doors on the units that empty out into this alley right now. Do those get used regularly? Or, um, are they just a fire door? Well, uh, the the disc replay, you you see two doors there, and. Mm -hmm. One door does not get used. One door because they took two units uh, when they when they leased their their space. Okay. So pretty much that's two spaces in one. Um, by the way, if the if the dumpster truck drives around the building, um, you know if if there is drive through traffic uh, in the alley uh, just before the dumpster. Mm -hmm. He won't be able to get through there anyway, so he will have to wait for them. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I I, I think we all, I, I shouldn't speak for others, but uh, I mean, I, I, I'd i like to figure out how to make this work, but I just uh, have great concerns about uh, about the tightness and the uh, of the alley. But, you know, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. I appreciate your answers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Long. Uh, do we have any other questions from the commission for our petitioner? I don't see Mr. any Chair. other. Uh, I, uh, Mr. Caramagno. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, uh, I, I share the concerns of the dumpster. I think the positioning of the enclosure is, uh, from what I see on the screen here, is not... Uh, uh, not not uh, well set up for a garbage truck at any time of the day to get in there. The radius is tight. And then you've got traffic trying to come through there. Uh, you're just asking for collisions or potentially uh, injuries. So that's a problem that, that I see. Um, the second thing would be deliveries. I'm assuming this alley is used for deliveries uh, to the other businesses and I would assume deliveries to the coffee shop as well. Uh, how will that impact the, uh, the activity in this alley? Um, for myself, um, I can only speak for what I can do for, <laughs> for my unit, but, um, you know, we can instruct our deliveries. We only get it once a week. It's scheduled. Um, we can have them, you know, utilize, um, somewhere, anywhere in the parking lot, um, um, in, in, um, you know, in the front of the building, you know, um, so that they can they can wheel their products to the front door through the front door and not have to use the back door. Um, I know we use the Cisco warehouse, so they're very, you know, they they work with what we need it to be, so they can give us deliveries uh, and have safety for their own drivers and their truck as well. Um, 
so we can instruct them to park um, maybe in the front park along the along the street and they can use their dolly or cart to bring in the products to our front door. Um, do, 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 you have any, do you have any concerns about safety? I know Glenn talked about these doors, these man doors in the back of the building. Uh, do you have any concern about safety? People exiting, entering, uh, it, it looks like it's it's a problem waiting to happen to me. Sure, I understand. And, um, you know, for us, the only reason why we would need to go in the back door would be to throw a garbage. Um, so that's why we're proposing to just store it until there is no traffic back there. Um, there wouldn't be a drive through line after closing business. Um, so that way we can exit safely and not have uh, issue with a car right in front of us coming through um, to access the dumpster. And I believe, uh, you know, Mike said that the, the tenant right below us, uh, disc replays would be agreeable to something like that as well. Is it, did I hear you in the study session, you have a joint uh, agreement with the, with the building to the east of you, you can utilize the, that rear parking lot for something? Yes. and. And also, currently, the the dumpster gets picked up using via their property. So currently, the the dumpster is, I, I think, where it's positioned right now as shown, but it faces the east property. So the the dump truck simply comes in from using the property next door to us for the east, and just picks it up that way. And, and that was another option, but we didn't feel that was the best option. And what we could do is leave the dumpster where it is and build an enclosure around it the way it is with gates and then have some sort of crosswalk or, you know, uh, do not block um, that section. The, the way the dumpster is now, I was back there today myself, and uh, the way the dumpster is now is a, is a better way to approach it. I will say that uh, there's another problem there. That dumpster is right against your block wall, the back of your building, and without uh, bollards there to keep it off the wall, you're going to have a problem there eventually. It's going to push right through the back of the, back of the building. So well, you yes. really have to look close at that. But in doing that, that's also going to take away space in that alley which uh, continues to be my concern is just, uh, hey, I understand $800 a day in coffee sales is great, but we're jamming it into an alley here that I don't care for. All right, thank you, Mr. Caramagno. Uh, Mr. Long, and I also see Mr. Perry would like to make a comment. We'll get to you in a moment, Mr. Perry. Mr. Long? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one more thing, I guess, uh, uh, for the other uh, Big B owners, uh, or franchisers. Um, I mean, I, I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't know, but I would assume most of your business is done in the morning. Is that correct? Or do you have, do you have any kind of, uh, can you help me out with that? Is, is most of the drive through business done uh, early on or by noon, or is it steady through the whole day? Is there a percentage that's done before noon? Hey, this is uh, Bob Perry. I would guess something like uh, 60 to 70 percent of our sales would be in the morning time okay and and uh um to the landlord uh, do you know what time does the other tenant open in the morning um they open i believe the med post might open around 8 a.m i'm not i'm not 100 certain but the phone store i yeah. think opens at 10 a.m okay um, all right just things for me to consider. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Long. Any other uh, questions or comments from the commission? Mr. Chair? Ms. Smiley. Yeah, um, I don't have any problem with the um, uh, landlord or with the business, or I have no doubts about anything else except that drive through. Um, I, I have seen 11 and 11, but I, you know, it's trying to, I just think we're, that's a major problem waiting to happen. And with the dumpster and, and with the doors, it's just, 
a drive through is great. It just, that doesn't seem to be the location for one for me. Okay. That's it. Thank you, Ms. Smiley. Any other questions or comments from the commission? At this time, if not, uh, Mr. Perry, did you have anything else that you wanted to add? Yes, there was a question about the uh, the delivery uh, and how that could uh, be addressed. And Ed uh, spoke about uh, possibly taking it in through the front of the uh, uh, store. But in addition to that, uh, the deliveries can be scheduled uh, to be there very early in the morning, uh, even uh, possibly before open. So they sometimes uh, we can get Cisco to come out there very early in the morning to deliver the product so that that would happen um, uh, prior to us or uh, to Ed's store if approved to even before it was even open, deliveries could be scheduled so that uh, you would not have cars in there while the delivery is happening. Just wanted to make that sure that was known as a possibility. That's a good comment, Mr. Perry. We appreciate that. Uh, I think the question also applies to some of the other tenants in that building as well, though, which uh, may pose a little bit more of a uh, uh, a challenge. I'm not sure how their deliveries go, but uh, Mr. Long, you had an additional comment or question? Sorry, Mr. Chairman, I keep uh, doing one more thing. Oh, I guess free. to the position, um, I, you know, I, I'm not sure, again, I'm not a mind reader, but I, I'm not sure that you have four votes tonight to pass this along. Um, and I do think that we we kind of like this project, but we just aren't sold yet on the uh, on the drive through. So, uh, you know, I mean, we, I can call, I can put forth a resolution or I can put forth a, a tabling resolution. And I was wondering if uh, what, what the petitioner thought about that, if, uh, if we were to table it and come back, if there were other things that they thought they might be able to, to do to uh, try to get the commission uh, a little more behind the use of this alley. Well, that's a good question, Mr. Long, and I, I would like the petitioner to uh, uh, let us know their thoughts at this point, because if, if a tabling motion is offered, it will end discussion immediately. So we, we want to get a sense of uh, your thoughts as to uh, how this may proceed or what your thoughts are. If, if this is tabled, would you be able to continue um, working on this, uh, this petition and the site plan? to address the concerns of the commission and uh, Mr. Boyson? Yes, um, I guess um, if I don't know if there's anybody in the audience, uh, if there's anybody else that wants to speak out for or against. So if they have concerns, um, you know, we can take that into account. And then I guess after that, uh, we can make a decision how we want to proceed. Is that possible? Or maybe there's nobody, <laughs> I don't know. It is. It is certainly possible. We will. We will check with the rest of the audience and make sure that they get an opportunity uh, to speak if, if there are any. Uh, so thank you for for that. Um, if there's no other questions from the commission, at this point, I will look and see if there is anyone in the audience wishing to speak for or against this petition. If so, please click raise hand uh, in your Zoom application so we can know that you would wish to speak. Uh, Ms. Shockleen uh, would like to speak. So good evening again, uh, Ms. Shockleen, and you're welcome to unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Jennifer Shockleen. Again, I'm a resident at 27954 Linden. Um, as a, a resident um, and a consumer, I am in favor of this petition. I have a adult disabled child um, and it is extraordinarily difficult to get into any type of business, um, even when there isn't a pandemic. So we are currently um, completely limited in our purchasing choices to businesses that offer um, drive up. And, um, you know, so just for that reason alone, um, you know, to speak to their business numbers, I, I'm sure that there are a lot of people who utilize the service, but there is a portion of your population in this community that 100% needs things like drive up um, in order to just access the service um, and have a normal kind of sense of, you know, being a part of the community. So um, for those reasons, I am in favor of it. Thank you for my time. 
Well, thank you, Ms. Shockley. That's a, that's a wonderful point that you made that not only is uh, drive up services seen as a convenience for a lot of people, but it's a necessity for uh, many in our community as well. So I, I appreciate those comments very much. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak for or against this item? I don't see anyone else raising their hand. Uh, Mr. Uh, Boyson, Mr. Hoba, we will give you a chance to um, make any additional comments that you would like before uh, we make our decision. If there is no other questions or comments from any of the commissioners at this point, we always give the petitioner the last last word. Yes. Um, well, thank you, everyone, uh, for your feedback. Um, right now, um, in consideration, um, especially, you know, uh, Mr. Ventura doesn't have a current set of um, what we're planning to do. Uh, I would I would request that we table uh, this petition into the uh, next the next uh, uh, planning commission meeting, so that we have time to address the the additional concerns as well as. The, the members of the commission and the, the planning department can um, review these revisions that we've made um, so that we can try to work together to address the concerns and hopefully proceed. Okay, thank you. And I'll go to the commission one last time, see if there's any questions or comments from any of our commissioners. Make sure that everyone has a chance to speak. There's no additional questions or comments, then a motion would be in order. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll offer a, a tabling motion until the uh, meeting of, when do we meet again? September 22nd, Mark? Mark, our next uh, study and regular our meeting are uh, that's yeah, that's correct. Uh, we'll have a study meeting on the 15th. We skip a week because of the Labor Day holiday. Uh, and then uh, we meet again on the 15th study session only. And then on the 22nd, we come back for a voting meeting. So, so you'll have an opportunity to discuss this in, in greater detail at the study meeting on the 15th. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Taramina. Mr. Long has offered a motion to table uh, to our study meeting of the 15th, regular meeting of the 22nd. Is there a motion, is there a support for that motion? Okay. Support. We have support by Mrs. McHugh, I heard. Uh, we have a motion to table by Mr. Long, supported by Mrs. McHugh. There is no discussion on tabling motions. So we'll go right to our secretary to call the roll. Mr. Long? Aye. Mrs. McHugh? Aye. Mrs. Smiley? Aye. Mr. Ventura? Aye. Chairman Wagner votes aye. Chairman Wilshaw? Votes aye. Motion passes. The item has been tabled. Uh, thank you for coming this evening and uh, for the discussion. We will continue to work on this, uh, our planning staff uh, with you, and uh, we'll see you at our next study meeting in a couple weeks, okay? Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time and uh, trying to work together through this. Have a good night. Thank you. You have a good night as well. We appreciate uh, uh, your work as well. So uh, if there's nothing else on that item, I believe we are done with the public hearing section of our agenda. We are. And we move on to item number three, the miscellaneous items, Mr. Secretary. Petition 2019-06-02-09, submitted by Newman Smith Architecture. Requested a one-year extension of all plans in connection with the proposal to expand the floor area, renovate the exterior appearance of the building, and modify the vehicular parking layout of the existing Salvation Army resale store at 33600 Plymouth Road, located on the north side of Plymouth Road between Farmington and Stark Roads in the southeast quarter of Section 28. Thank you, Mr. Caramagno. Uh, Mr. Tarmina? Uh, just briefly, this is a waiver use petition that we reviewed about a year ago involving the expansion and remodeling of the Salvation Army store. Um, they are requesting a one-year extension of all plans that were approved as part of that waiver use petition. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tarmina. And uh, we do have Mr. Cummings in the audience uh, with us. He is welcome to unmute himself if he would like to add any additional 
comments. Again, we'll just ask you to start with your name and address. Hi, my name is Jim Cummings <clears throat> with uh, Newman Smith Architecture, uh, 400 Galleria Office Center, uh, Suite 555 Southfield. Um, I just wanted to give a kind of an update to where we were with the project at this time. Um, we uh, awarded PCI contractors in September to work with us to justify the budget and, and to work with the uh, contractors on getting them on board. Um, that took us to November. In November, we realized that we needed to kind of go through a VE process. That took about a couple months. That got us to the end of the year. So by the beginning of the year, the budget had finally been approved. Um, we were working on our drawings. We were looking to submit probably in sometime mid-April uh, to the city for engineering and plan review. Uh, COVID hit towards the uh, middle of March, end of March. We were contacted on April 9th by uh, Salvation Army to go on hold for about a month so they can review the project a little bit and, and, and just kind of see what was going to happen with the situation. Uh, they came back to us on May 8th and said that they did not approve for the project to go forward and that what they wanted to do is have another six to ten month hold on the project and see what happened at that point. So. Going forward, I think, you know, that would put us towards the end of this year, beginning of next year. Um, hopefully they would approve us to move forward. We probably have to go through another budget phase and probably work with more some, some contractors to kind of justify that again and get it approved again. But I would think probably if, if we did get to go move, move forward, that would put us towards probably uh, mid-March, mid-April of next year to, to start the project, at least submit the drawings to the city. So that's kind of where we are right now. All right. Thank you, Mr. Cummings. Uh, any questions for our petitioner? Mr. Chair? Mr. Long? Uh, just real quick, at the study session, I had asked, um, you know, how, how, just out of curiosity, what's the volume of uh, pickup? It's, you know, the expansion's obviously still necessary. Are they, uh, are they experiencing greater than uh, normal volume with the COVID or not as much? Just Well, the store needed to cut back because they were limited on how many people they could have in the store. They live in their many hours. This has all been kind of state state mandated, so they had to lim uh, limit the amount of hours of which they could take donations, and then also have people come in. So right now, um, you know, they're having a hard time trying to get some of the older merchandise out. Um, working through their, their donations, people are still donating, but it's still because of the COVID and, and because of the um, restrictions on, on on spacing and and, and all that stuff. Um, they're 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 not as doing as well, but they are still getting lots of donations and, and they're doing you know as best as they could right now. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Long. Any other questions for our petitioner? If not, anyone in the audience wishing to speak for or against this item? Don't see anybody raising their hand. Um, if there is no further questions or comments, a motion would be in order. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Long. I'd like to offer an approving resolution that the request for a one-year extension of all plans in connection with the proposal to expand the floor area, renovate the exterior appearance of the building, and modify the vehicular parking layout of the existing Salvation Army resale store at 33600 Plymouth Road is hereby approved subject to City Council approval and the following conditions. Number one, that the request for a one-year extension of waiver use approval by Newman Smith Architecture on behalf of Salvation Army in a letter dated July 28, 2020 is hereby approved. And number two, that all conditions imposed by Council Resolution number 269-19 in connection with petition 2019-06-02-09 shall remain in effect to the extent that they are not in conflict with the foregoing condition. And is there support? Support. I have support by Mrs. McHugh. This is a motion to approve a one-year extension by Mr. Long and supported by Mrs. McHugh. If there's no discussion on the motion, a uh, roll call would be uh, in order. Mr. Long. Aye. Mrs. McHugh. Aye. Mrs. Smiley. Aye. Mr. Ventura. Aye. Chair Magna votes aye. Chairman Wolchow. Votes aye. Motion passes and that'll go to City Council with an approving recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Cummings, for uh, attending this evening and we uh, certainly hope to see this project move forward. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you and have a good evening. You too. Uh, we have one item left on our agenda, Mr. Secretary. That is the approval of the minutes of the 1,158th public hearing and regular meeting 
held by the Planning Commission on August 18th, 2020. I see all members were present for that meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Supported by? Support. We have a motion by Mr. Long, supported by Mrs. McHugh again to approve the minutes. Uh, if there is no objection, I will ask that our secretary show six on uh, that approval. I see no objections being levied, so we will note that as being approved. Thank you uh, for that. And that takes us to the end of our agenda. Is there any other business to come before the commission this evening? If not, a motion to adjourn would be in order. Motion to adjourn. Support. By, uh, Mrs. Smiley is going to take that one. So we have a motion to adjourn. A little bit. <laughs> There's a motion by Mr. Long to adjourn the meeting, supported by Mrs. Smiley. Again, if there's uh, no objection, I'm going to ask if we can show six on the motion to adjourn. I see no objections. So we will uh, note that as being approved. Uh, that takes us to the end of our meeting. Uh, and I would like to certainly thank Livonia Television staff for their contribution to bringing this meeting to the community this evening. And with no further business to come before the Planning Commission, I will note that the meeting has been adjourned at 9.16 p.m. Good night, Livonia, and stay safe.